In this video, revealing a step-by-step -step tutorial for Amazon FBA, what it is and how complete beginners earning $100 to $700 a day with no experience, more that after the intro. Hey guys, how's it going? Mike Vasil here. Welcome to this video. Before we actually begin, I remind you that some of us have opened up for this week's free workshop where it's the fastest and easiest way to make money online. We literally have a 62 year old woman go from zero to 160 grand profit in 90 days, so check it out now. So one of the reasons why I wanted to get started with Amazon FBA when I was first starting off making money online was I just wanted more freedom. You know, I wanted to find a business model where literally I could partner with an existing company, they do all of the hard work, and I could literally just create passive income. So I could do cool things like provide for my family, get freedom for myself, as well as like, for example, maybe do a little bit of traveling, right? Which is why I got into Amazon FBA and we scaled it to the point where we went from zero to $700 a day. When people saw you know, my results, they were always questioning and curious on how the heck that was possible. So this is literally what I wish I knew when I was first getting started. And the first thing is this understanding what Amazon FBA is. So for you guys to understand what Amazon FBA is, you need to understand what the business model actually entails. So essentially in traditional ways of starting a business, you would literally have you know, a product and then you'd have to do some marketing. And then if you have like a brick and mortar space, you also need to have, you know, a good piece of real estate where there's a lot of traffic that is literally, you know, in front of like your brick and mortar store. But like I said, that is the traditional way of doing business. Now you can literally outsource the traffic, meaning the eyeballs that go to see your product, as well as like the delivery mechanism and actually like the, the people that actually work in the store. You can just outsource that all to Amazon. You know, the business model is essentially, there are about 2.6.7 billion people that go to Amazon every single month. So Amazon is essentially becoming like a real estate game where instead of you owning and developing property, you know, like in a physical location, the business model is you develop property in Amazon's entire digital real estate where essentially people make money by ranking for certain keywords that pop up right here. And this in essence is the business model. You know, you rank products for certain keywords, you find the products, you literally ship it to Amazon. Amazon does everything else and all you got to do is reorder inventory whenever you run low on stock on Amazon. Now you're probably wondering, well Mike, how, what, what about these products? I, I don't know how to create a product from scratch, right? And this is literally one of the products that I ended up created, but this is literally what private label is. You can see all these products are essentially the exact same products if I type grill mat, right? The only difference is they have different pictures and different images and whatnot, right? Um, but the biggest thing is all of these are probably private labeled from the same supplier that you could just snap your logo on. You can literally go to, for example, alibaba.com, which is what congregates all of like the Chinese suppliers on one website. If I go ahead and, for example, click on grill mats, you could see that all of these suppliers look very similar to the ones that are selling on Amazon. You know, like some of them are like 20 cents, 45 cents, you know, like a couple dollars, 39 cents, right? And you literally compare that to what people are selling on Amazon, all of these suppliers are doing is they're literally just taking, you know, their own logo, putting their own picture of their own box, just snapping it on front of them. And you know, like it's the exact same product. It's kind of like back in the day when you would literally buy cereal and you would buy like, for example, the expensive name brand or kind of like the, the Walmart version of it, which is still kind of the same thing, but just different branding. Um, you could literally snap your own brand on any product out there on Alibaba and then that is what is known as private labeling. So even though you didn't create the product from scratch, you just put your brand on top of that. Does that make sense? Now let's talk about Amazon fulfillment. So essentially what it is, is you would literally buy these products from China, you'd snap your own logo on it, then you would ship it over to Amazon and then Amazon will literally fulfill the orders. When someone goes ahead and clicks on grill mat, they see this, they wanna go ahead and buy, instead of you being the one that virtually does the shipping and the handling of it, Amazon was like, you know what, you, you source the product, you found the product, we'll do everything else. So that's where literally like the passive income can come from in this business model. Now the second thing you need to understand is the costs when it comes to Amazon FBA. So there are typical costs that run, like that you get started with any business. Like when you, for example, well, I was supposed to be a dentist, right? Um, and no one told me that to become a dentist, not only did I have to pay 40 to 60,000 dollars a year uh, to go ahead and you know for the education but when I started my practice I would literally need five hundred thousand dollars right I would literally have to take a loan from the bank I would have to get a good piece of real estate and a good intersection of the road where a lot of people could see my dental practice and I would have to get like the inventory the toothpaste stuff you know the chairs uh, the actual physical location I have to pay rent on that no one told me that there's a lot of 
cost when it comes to starting like a business like that, right? I just thought, oh, I can make six figures and I could just become a dentist. There's always costs when it comes to running any type of business and the costs with running Amazon are multiple ones. The first one is when you become an Amazon seller, you need to sign up for sellercentral.amazon.com. You just sign up and it's $39 a month. Now what I would actually recommend is do not actually sign up for this until you find you know a product and you've already done the sourcing and whatnot, which we're gonna talk about because of the fact that it might take several months for you to actually get the product. So I made the mistake of just signing up because I was so excited, but then I was just biting the cost of $39 a month um, in terms of sell selling fees. Another cost is literally the upfront capital that you go ahead and, for example, invest in Alibaba. You know, this would be actually your biggest cost. You know, some people start with $500. I know people that I interview here in Bali where there's a lot of successful people, like this 11 year old girl who turned on $30 million or this guy makes a million dollars per month, or other people that start really successful Amazon FBA businesses, they even start as much as $5,000. But it really depends on where you are. You know, you could start lower if you don't have that much budget, or you could start higher, right? But those are essentially the biggest costs. And remember, do not sign up for becoming an Amazon seller until you have literally, you know, found a product because then you'll save yourself $39 a month um, and you're not biting that cost, if that makes sense. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. The pros are truly turnkey. You know, I literally have people that, you know, like I said, I interviewed on my podcast that run Amazon FBA businesses and, you know, the moment they find a winning product, they literally send it over to Amazon and then the moment you have like for example a product that does really really well in a low competitive niche that is uh, like literally selling to an underserved population and demographic and target audience you could make like some serious passive income you know I, I know people that make millions of dollars um, and, and it's literally just because you know they're just looking for a product that does well, they slap their own branding on it and they just ship it over to Amazon. The only cons, and, and this is funny because I literally talked to an Amazon FBA seller like yesterday at a party here in Bali, and I was like, what are the downsides that you don't like about Amazon? Because he literally just purchased this an Amazon FBA business. He was like, I don't literally like playing in Jeff Bezos sandbox, you know, because there, there could be literally updates where, you know, some people could come in and, you know, your spot is just gone and you have literally all this inventory. The Chinese can come and just like compete against you, which you never want to compete against the Chinese or the competition might get too crazy. Like right now, when I got started, it, like there wasn't 17,000 reviews. Now that's a ridiculous amount. You know, so it literally becomes like who gets the most reviews and who could charge the least. So it's kind of like a race to the bottom, which is another thing that I don't like, but don't worry. We're gonna go over exactly how you could circumnavigate that in this video. Now let's talk about how to maximize sales. Now the first thing that I always like doing is always looking at the best seller list because I wanna see what is already selling really well. You know, it's very hard for you to come into a business and to just like guess your right product right off the bat. So I like looking into all these things because this is updated hourly and I know exactly what is being sold like crazy, right? So we could even just use, for example, this uh, kid's mask for outdoor thing. You can see that this is number two. So this is most likely making and generating millions of dollars in revenue, right? And the first thing that I like doing is just seeing the best sellers list by just clicking on what's available. So we'll use this as an example. But I like also looking deeper into the certain categories right here. So this is the number two in all of like, for example, toys, this is number one and two in electronics. But if you come in here, you could literally go in and go very deep into certain things. Like we could do, you know, the best selling in, you know, clothing, shoes, and jewelry, and all of these things pop up. These are even micro categories that you could go ahead and look in. So you could see exactly what is doing really, really well. We could even do like, for example, jewelry accessories. And you could see that the top ones that are doing the best are, you know, like for example, all these cleaners that I didn't even expect, uh, these holders, right? Um, so all of these things are what is the most popular right now for like jewelry, right? Um, and even like this interesting watch, you get like some idea of what does really well. People enjoy like the storage of jewelry, which is like an interesting thing. Another thing that I like doing is when you find a product that you wanna go into, you wanna go and look into all the ratings and you wanna find out what their biggest negative reviews are. Because the, the thing about this is this is what will help you improve the product. If you could improve the product and add that into your marketing, you would get more sales than traditionally you know, your competitor. So all these people say terrible ear loops, handles broke on every single one that I use, waste of money. So one easy way that I could improve this product is go over to, for example, Alibaba, type in uh, kid's mask, 
and just make sure, hey, can you make these like mask things with the ear loops just more indestructible, like make these a lot more thicker. And I mean, just like that, you can see the profit margins right here from like five cents to seven cents to 50 cents compared to what it's being sold on Amazon for like, what was it, like 10 bucks? Right, so you could see just how crazy like the profit margins if you could find like a winning niche, right? Another one you could optimize for are the images themselves. Now notice you see one, two, three, four, five, right? These are five looking images. Now if I put just like face mask disposable, depending on how you could actually like optimize the picture, you could use psychology to make it appear as if, you know, there was more value for the product that they're buying, which will allow you to go ahead and for example, you know, distinguish yourself by increasing your sales, by increasing your price, right? Like this just literally looks like one mask but you could see this, the way that it looks, it almost looks like more masks and even the color stands up more. I don't even know what this is, but you could see like how colors matter, um, how like putting a face in there matters, a box increases like the branding and design, right? Putting multiple colors, it, it really just creates a unique proposition where it doesn't look like any typical, um, you know, type of, you know, product, right? And it distinguishes yourself. So this is another way to maximize sales. Another one is known as PPC campaigns. Now you can see that this is sponsored and it only has 35, you know, reviews. And what people are actually doing, they're going over to Amazon and typing in Amazon PPC. And they're literally hiring people to run advertising campaigns for them if they don't know exactly how to. They could even go down, for example, to a place like the Philippines, make sure they're less than $10 an hour or below. And they're hiring people from the Philippines to go ahead and you know run advertisements and they only charge like $10 an hour, $10 an hour. Look at this, $5 an hour, 20K earn 99% job success, right? Um, and what this essentially is, is when you go and start a product, you can literally send them over to Amazon and start immediately running advertising so that you could go ahead and, for example, make sales. So this is kind of like an overview on how you could actually maximize sales when you are just first getting started. Now let's actually break down product research. You know, the, the thing about you know making money with uh, Amazon is it's more so risk management. Like how can you make the most amount of money without actually you know spending a lot of money, right? Because my biggest problem was I would literally buy stuff from China, ship it over to Amazon, and because I didn't do proper product research, I would literally lose a bunch of money. Like I remember I was like, oh, I wanna sell dog leashes because everyone loves their dogs, right? So I literally got into the dog leash business, bought like several thousands of dollars worth of dog leashes from China, shipped them over to Amazon, and made no money. And it's because I didn't understand the proper product research techniques that could actually mitigate my risk. So one of the most favorite product research tips that I've ever been taught in my entire life is seeing what works in one platform and moving it over to another platform where there's not a lot of competitors. You could do this from Amazon, you could do this from like other businesses as well, right? So let's take into this account. If I was gonna go ahead and sell grill mats again, I, that would be a losing battle. Cause look at this, this is literally 16,000 reviews, 16,000 reviews. They have multiple listings, right? They're not only are they running ads, but they're also ranked on the first page. So it's literally a hard business to go and move into. How would I circumnavigate it is finding a better product that is popular on another website, but that's not yet popular on Amazon and I would just, you know, like use that product instead. One place that I would like going is for example, watch count because it shows me what's the most popular products on eBay. And eBay is very similar to Amazon. People go there to buy products. So if it's popular on eBay and it doesn't exist on Amazon, that's one way where my brain is just like ding, 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 there's an opportunity here. So let's actually just use jewelry for example, right? We can literally scroll down and you can see that this boho turquoise heart necklace got 5,700 watchers. That means there's 5,000 people interested in buying this at $19, right? So we could even just look at the price of this, right? Um, we could uh, go and put that in in like, uh, for example, Amazon, we could do, turquoise heart necklace. And we can see what the competition is. And you can see the competition is a lot lower. Look at this, 33 reviews, 163 reviews, 14 reviews. And this is on the first page and not a lot of people are running ads to it. Like this is just one person. So you can see that it's not as competitive and check that out, that's $39. It's more expensive than for example, what you would get on eBay, right? Like this is something similar. And you know, it's less competitive than traditional ways. Like you could see some of these are only like 33, here's 20 reviews. So you'd see how ridiculous that is, right? Like I could literally go to Alibaba, 
type in just, for example, heart jewelry, and you could see exactly what's already doing really well. And then, you know, some of the heart jewelry is only like $2, right? So you could see exactly how insane the profit margins are, especially if you do like really good branding. Look at this, this is like $3. Um, they have gold ones for like $2. They have nice ones for like very, very affordable prices, 49 cents, right? All of these are heart-shaped jewelry, right? Another place that I like doing is uh, going over to AliExpress because this is where a lot of people run Facebook ads to drop shipping products. Meaning like they literally do survival of the fittest and the best products will sell the most. So what I like doing is just going into any one of these categories and pulling it up and let's just do the exact same thing. Say we wanna go ahead and sell, for example, uh, trendy earrings, right? What I like doing is I like clicking on one of these categories and making sure that it's sort by orders because not only will it teach me which products does the best, but also tell me which suppliers were really good. And look at this, 26,000 sold for these butterfly clip earrings, right? Or look at this, bird earrings, right? Only a dollar, 21,000 sold. So I can literally come up to here and type in something interesting like bird ear rings. And we can see what other people are selling them for, right? Like look at this, $30, $9, $7, $9, Eleven dollars. Uh, you could see that the like reviews aren't as competitive, and some are even selling for twenty nine dollars. So you could see how like crazy this is when you see in terms of like the profit margins, right? And I only got that because I looked at AliExpress and watch count. Does that make sense? Now let's talk about a concept known as how to bundle your products to increase, you know, your value, right? And this is literally what I did back in the day because I remember when I was like selling, for example, grill mats. You know, I literally had to compete against all of these people. So I remember though, I, I learned a concept known as bundling where you could essentially um, make more money by just bundling products that customers were already gonna buy together, right? Like if I go ahead and click on any one of these things, notice that when you scroll down, you see frequently bought together these multiple grill mats, right? This one, this one, and this one, which is interesting. And you even see like total price, right? But if you literally scroll into any one of these, you know, products and you could see even this one, Right, you could see that grill, they buy grill mats together. We could even see that, oh, look at this. Barbecue gloves are also mentioned and then also a brush, right? So what I started doing was just combining things together, right? Like if I literally type in, for example, meat, claws, and grill gloves. I was actually one of the first people to put these products together, right? Where you literally have gloves, meat claws, and then look, another person added like a thermometer, right? You literally find what people are already buying together and you just put them together. Not only will it save you costs in shipping because you could literally get the same products from China, right? So you could save money on there, but it increases a value proposition for someone that is buying things online. Because say someone wants to buy meat claws, they see this and they're like, oh, I could get meat claws and these two other things. Or maybe someone searches for, for example, um, you know, like thermometer and they're like, oh, I've never seen these before. So it gives you more opportunities to own more real estate in the search engine of Amazon, but it also allows you to, for example, be more competitive because some of these other people only just have one off. Like look at this, these are only two things compared to these, these are three things. So when you could include more things, it's known as the FUD effect where it literally allows someone getting started um, to wanna buy things on Amazon. Like, oh my, wow, I can literally buy more of this, I'll get more bang for my buck which is another sales technique that a lot of advertisers use to go ahead and increase their value when it comes to selling things online. Another thing that you wanna do is make sure you source the right supplier. So one of the things that you need to make sure when you source the right supplier is you need to make sure that you know these products are really good. So you can literally make sure that they're trade assurance. You could even do that they're verified suppliers and you could even do the ones that have like really good response time. And when you go ahead and click on all those types, you know these are probably the most vetted suppliers when it comes to these things, you'll have the highest quality of products. And as well as like when you talk to them, you know, they're very responsive. So you could always make sure that if there's a problem, like I remember there was a problem with the boxes, like it all got crushed in getting shipped from China to America. So I literally reached out to them and said, hey, you know, all of the boxes got crushed. Can you send me some replacements? And they literally sent me replacements on their cost, which meant I didn't have to spend any more money because of the fact that they were good suppliers. And you gotta think about these suppliers as business partners. You know, they want you to succeed because if you make more money, you'll buy more from them. So you really 
really got to start thinking and viewing them as that instead of just people that are just going to give you products so that you could get rich off of Amazon FBA. Now, the next thing that you got to understand is how to actually create this listing. Now, this listing has multiple parts to it. Number one, an image. Number two, ranking for keywords and a description that also ranks for keywords. You can see that these are all keywords right here. So all of these are really consist of multiple things. When I type in grill gloves, all of these things pop up, right? So a lot of these words are used in the titles and in the descriptions. These pictures, you can literally go ahead and hire someone from Fiverr, Amazon Photography. This is what we ended up doing, if I could spell photography right, which I obviously didn't, right? Uh, but you can see that they'll make you Amazon Photography for like $10 on Fiverr. That was the first thing. I literally send them a product on Fiverr. I remember they were like from Hawaii and they literally just took really nice pictures and I gotta use them on Amazon. Another one that you gotta understand is you can also hire people out to create these listings for you that are optimized. Like I can literally come up to here and type in the exact same thing, Op Amazon listing optimization. And again, as long as they're under $10 an hour and below from the Philippines, I can hire someone for $5 an hour from the Philippines and they'll help me optimize literally everything when it comes to my Amazon store. So like I said, you could get started with this by yourself, but if you don't wanna know or learn exactly how to optimize these things and these images, you can just hire it out for like $5 or $10 an hour, which will save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache of doing things wrong. Which leads me to the next thing, it's how do you actually get reviews? So there's multiple different ways. The first thing that I did was I begged my close friends and relatives for you know my first 20 reviews. That is probably the most demoralizing part and it's not like, the, it's the least sexy part of this entire business because you literally need you know people to go ahead and leave your reviews of course there's expensive services but like what I did is I literally begged you know my girlfriend at the time her parents my uncles uh, my aunts to literally buy the product and leave a review the first 20 to 25 are the most important the next thing that you could do is the moment you get 20 or 25 and you're in a very low competitive niche you can start reaching out to influencers so if you really think about it right why does bullet proof coffee. Why does it do really well? Because they're not dependent on Amazon. They built their platform off of Amazon and they're able to launch it to their own audience, right? But you could do the exact same thing. Say I sell like, for example, cat supplements, right? And you can see that, you know, like I said, some of these cat supplements are doing all right. Like this is only one review, 18 reviews, but they're also like running ads to it, right? So they're essentially making money. One of the things that you could also do is just get someone on YouTube to make a video about it. Like if I go ta cat tips, and I see someone like, for example, let's just scroll down and give you a really good example. Like this girl right here, Mia Stone, 4,000 subscribers, 600,000 views. I could be like, hey, can you make a video for like 20 bucks or 50 bucks and just review my product, right? And if it's people that really love their cats and they leave a review, you know, you could get 600,000 views to your listing that would increase sales and those sales will naturally turn into, for example, uh, uh, what's it called, reviews as well. And ultimately you just repeat the process until you rank for more keywords on like Amazon and you start making more money. And as you start increasing your rankings on Amazon by being on the second page, the first page, the top listings right here, that's how you actually make the most money. But you're probably wondering, is Amazon FBA beginners friendly? Um, not really, which is why we literally created 77 legit passive income ideas to make money while sleeping that you know you could see one of them went from zero to eight thousand dollars in 30 days with no product and without me doing my own shipping and you can see each one of these are literally a bunch of free trainings that you could literally get for free um all you got to do is just check out the complete list and i'll just put that in the links below if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe and check out my podcast of all these really successful people that make a bunch of money online like this 11 year old girl that turned on 30 million dollars and this guy that makes a million dollars from a profit check it out right here right here hope yourselves love you guys see you guys later Woo.